السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters, you and I know that Musa عليه السلام or the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, was one of the greatest of the Prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the top five. And Allah Almighty makes mention of his name the most in the Qur'an, from among the messengers. The fact that his name has been mentioned the most does not elevate his status beyond that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because your name being mentioned in the Qur'an, or should I say a name being mentioned in the Qur'an, does not necessarily mean that it is depictive of its value based on how many times it is mentioned. And the reason I say this is there are people who are saying that Jesus, may peace be upon him, has a higher status in prophethood than Muhammad sallallahu because he was mentioned more times in the Quran and that is not true. It's got nothing to do with how many times you were mentioned. The Prophet sallallahu the Quran was revealed to him. So, if the Quran was revealed to him, it is natural that his name won't appear in the Quran as many times as other messengers whose stories were repeated in the Quran. Another thing is, if value was added to the number of times someone was mentioned in the Quran, then the Pharaoh of Fir'aun is mentioned in the Quran so many times. What value did he have? Nothing at all. It was reverse value. Shaitan, Iblis is mentioned several times in the Quran. So let's get this straight. How many times your name or a name is mentioned in the Quran is not indicative of its value in the, in the eyes of Allah Almighty. We believe that Afdalul Khalqi wa Akramul Rusuli is Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What that means is the greatest of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, today I'd like to address a beautiful point which is serious and at the same time it gives a lot of comfort to the broken hearts and those who are oppressed and downtrodden. What is it? The Pharaoh, Fir'aun, he was living at a time when Musa alayhi salam was sent to Allah, uh, sorry, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people, basically to him and his cronies. Allah Almighty sent Musa alayhi salam, the Prophet Moses, to who? To Fir'aun. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَىٰ بِآيَاتِنَا وَسُلْطَانٍ مُّبِينٍ إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَئِهِ Allah says, and remember when we sent Musa alayhi salam with our signs, to who? With our clear signs to the Pharaoh and his cronies, his people. Now, why did Allah choose to send a messenger to the Pharaoh? It's important to know this. Imagine Allah sending a prophet of his, a noble prophet, an amazing human being, one of the five top messengers of Allah, known as Ulul Azmi Min Al Rusul, the ones who had great determination. Do you know who those five are? If someone asks you as a Muslim, who are the five greatest prophets? What's your answer? You have to say, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, and Nuh alayhi salam. So that is Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Noah with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, five. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of them. So why would Allah send one of these prophets with determination to a man because he was wreaking havoc on earth and because he was oppressing people wholesale and because he kept on calling himself a god and because he was really, really nasty and Allah wanted a lesson to be learned by everyone right up to the end of time. That's the reason. Did the Pharaoh become 
a person who changed his life and bettered himself? Not at all. He became worse. You follow what I'm saying? Allah sent a messenger to someone from him to guide that man and that man was not guided. How's that? This goes to show you and I that sometimes Allah will send you signs. Don't be a pharaoh. Take the sign in your stride and make sure that you have changed yourself. When we say don't be a pharaoh, the pharaoh was the one whom the signs came to. The signs that he asked for came. But he still denied. That was the pharaoh. Astaghfirullah. My brothers, my sisters, let's learn something very interesting. The pharaoh had many gifts given to him by Allah, but he abused that. He abused it in the worst possible way. He didn't recognize them as favors. He thought, it's me. I did it. I'm the one. I'm the sharp businessman. I made my money. I propelled myself into position of authority. I'm the boss. I'm the king. And later he began to say, I'm the God. وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأُ مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ غَيْرِي The Pharaoh told his people, oh my people, I don't know of any God that you people have besides me. Oh no, oh no. A man who uses the loo, calling himself a God. A man who has stomach problems, who needs to pass wind, calling himself God. A man who actually becomes sick and ill, calling himself God. A man who can't solve his own problems. He wanted to capture one youngster because some fortune teller told him that there's going to be a youngster who's going to remove you from your throne. And so he started killing all of the boys because he didn't even know who the youngster was. And the same youngster was brought into his own home and was looked after by his own wife. And the poor fellow who called himself the God of the worlds didn't even realize it's happening under your dirty, smelly nose. That was the man. He calls himself God. What did he have? He had nothing besides material items of the world. Let's not be pharaohs. Let's understand in our lives when Allah gave you something, don't think you are it. Don't. Don't allow it to get to your head no matter what. What, what could it be? Let's look at what the Pharaoh had. Number one, he had a lot of wealth. A lot of wealth. When you get money, Initially, you're looking for a job. You're trying. You go to all the people. Please give me a job. They kick you out. You go to another door. Give me a job. You apply here. You apply there. Listen, listen, listen. You apply everywhere. Online, offline, in person, via someone. Use this, use that. And you apply and you're looking for a job. At that stage, you know that you are a nobody. Because you are in need of this job. And then suddenly, one day you get a job. Boom, I'm a driver. Woo! I finally got a few rands in my pocket. Hey, I'm a big man. MashaAllah, Allah bless you. Allah bless all of us. That is a blessing of Allah. But Allah's watching. Allah says, look, I threw a few rands in your direction. What are you going to do? And then suddenly you get a promotion. You are in charge of the fleet. And then you become a manager. And then you have your own business. And then suddenly it's growing. And you forgot. One day I was running around looking for a job. Now you got this business of your own. And guess how much you're making? You're making enough to employ 30, 35, 40, 50 people. And now you start speaking to them rough. But when your boss used to speak to you a little bit rough, telling you, why are you five minutes late? You used to get upset and say, this man thinks he's arrogant. But the way you are speaking to the people who are now working for you, you forgot. Allahu Akbar. You were so quick to forget, right? That when I was young and when I was still working for someone, I did not like the way they spoke to me. Today I'm speaking 10 times worse to the people that are working for me only because I got fulos, a few coins. A few coins. That's what it is. You got a few rands or dollars or pounds or whatever it may be. And suddenly... You think it entitles you to speak roughly to people. La ilaha illallah. You are a little pharaoh in the making. My brothers, my sisters, that's what you are. 
Allah sent messengers to deal with people like this. If you don't know why the story of the Pharaoh is mentioned in the Quran, you have a problem. It's mentioned for you and for I. He had more money than you. Allah sent a messenger to tell him, hey, Baso, be careful. Right? Be careful, watch out. Don't overstep the mark. You are still just a person. If we want, we can flood it and flash it in a second. Look at Karun. Karun was not the Pharaoh. He was a man at the time of the Pharaoh. He had a lot of wealth and he also used to do this that we mentioned just now, haughtiness. And he used to say this money. What God? Who's a God here? This money was me, my brain. My brain. Open the brain. It looks like scrambled eggs. Have you ever seen it? Yes. Because it's scrambled, in all honesty. If it was not for Allah to give you the proper chemical balance of your mind, you would be known as a mental case. Just because chemicals, slightly imbalanced in your brain, you start hearing voices, seeing things, getting angry, believing everyone wants to harm you, everyone wants to attack you, whereas that is not even the case. They love you, they don't want to harm you, and the voices being heard are a result of something that perhaps is within, and whatever else it may be. May Allah help us deal with this. We're going through a lot on earth. People are struggling. The point I'm raising is don't think what you got is solely your brain. I've said this many times and I love to repeat it. The richest of the people are those who don't have proper educational qualifications. Go check. Go and check. Go look and study globally as well as locally. Your area here, Rivoli, beautiful area, lovely. The hearts are warm. You can feel the warmth when you enter the masjid as the brothers and sisters are greeting you outside. And there is a warmth of, mashallah, that is wealth. That is the wealth. What is your wealth? Your family. Your family. Your community. Your society. So the enemies are trying to destroy families. They are trying to destroy societies. You no longer care for each other. You no longer bother about each other. Why? When you're alone, all single, then you just do as you please. No one is there to remind you. The little pharaohs, that's what they are. The little pharaohs. The man got a bit of money, now he got a job, he got a fleet. He became arrogant, he starts instructing. It's not wrong to tell people, listen, the job starts at 8, you knock off for lunch at 1, you come back at 2, and up to 5 o'clock you shall work. 5 o'clock you knock off. Please, there is a little contraption, you clock your card in and you clock it out. Thank you very much. No harm. I spoke with respect. I put down my rules, I'm a little bit strict because we have a business to run, and I'm polite. And then I can tell my brother, this is warning number one, you did not attend on time, is there any explanation you have? No explanation? Well, if this happens two more times, unfortunately, I'll have to look for someone more productive. That's hard, right? It's very hard, but guess what? It's not wrong. They didn't insult you. They only read the riot act to you. That's all. They only told you that, listen, this is work. You want to take it or leave it? Either way. But when a person becomes haughty, what do they do? They start saying, you, I employ you. Come here. Two o'clock in the morning, you got to go. Why? Because I gave you a job. My brother, I have a family. I have people. I have responsibilities. I'm working for you eight to five. You cannot call me at five past five. And if you want to, you pay me more than double because, guess what? It's overtime and it's after hours. And that's if I can make it, if I cannot, don't feel bad. But we are little pharaohs. What happens when you got money? You become stingy. That's what happens. When you got money, the, the stingiest of the lot are the, have, the, the people who have the most. Trust me, you have guys who have very little, they'll take out and give. You got guys who got millions, not all of them. There is an exception. There are some who are very generous. But a lot of them, the more they get, the more they cling to it. That's part of what we were told by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You stick to it when you start loving it too much. You don't want to spend. Allah says, we gave you so you can spend, so that you can earn paradise. But what happens to us? We get it and we gather it. We want to amass it because I'm a millionaire. I want to be known as a billionaire. I want to be known as a trillionaire. Then when I die, they'll say the trillionaire has died. What happened to the trillions? Whatever happened, so long as they knew I was the trillionaire. But you never even spent the money. Subhanallah. You could have built a hospital in every village in your country, but you didn't. 
Do you know why? You just wanted to be known as a trillionaire. Had you built the hospitals, you may have not been known as a trillionaire because you spent your monies, but in the eyes of Allah, you were successful. Sadaqa jariya for you up to the end, a charity, the reward of which continues way beyond your death. My brothers, my sisters, the Pharaoh, Allah sent him a prophet to tell him, don't let your money get to your head. That was a message. And another message, what was it? Because when you have a lot of money, you see, initially in any community, this is man, mankind, any community, look, it's my first time coming to your beautiful masjid and this lovely community in Rivoli. But I can guarantee you, shaitan comes to everyone, good and bad. In any society and community, when people have money, people, the others respect the money they have. Have you seen it? They respect the money they have. And there comes a time when more than one person starts getting a similar amount of money. Now you've got five millionaires and ten millionaires. Now what's it about? It's no longer about millions because we've all made the millions. Now it's about power. Flex your muscle. How many people can I control? So the mosque must run according to me because I got ten million more than you. That's why. Who are you? You're a little pharaoh. That's what it is. A pharaoh in the making. Don't think because of your money, you're entitled to have a say, impossible, no chance. That is wrong. If what you are saying is right, even if you have no money, you are entitled. If what you are suggesting is a point of guidance, even if you have nothing, people should listen to what you have to say. وَجَاءَ مِنْ أَقْصَ الْمَدِينَةِ رَجُلٌ يَسْعَى Surah Yaseen. Allah says, a man came from the, from the innermost part of the city. And what happened? He was an ordinary person. He was warning these guys. What did he have? Neither money nor authority. He was correct. He said, oh people, follow the messenger. What did they do to him? They didn't listen to him. The Pharaoh himself, Allah says, وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِّنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانَهُ أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ A man from the family of the Pharaoh came up and said, Why are you killing this person? Simply because they are calling you towards Allah. But who was he? Neither did he have money nor authority, so they didn't listen to him. But was his speech correct? Yes. Was he mentioned by Allah in the Quran? Yes. The message was that of power. Although it's anonymous, we don't know his name. But he was a powerful man because his message was right. The minute you start listening to the wrong things said to you by those with money, you have a problem. The poet says, I see the people inclining towards those who have money. And the term mala means to incline. And mal also means wealth. Look at how it works. We're not condemning money. Everyone wants wealth. I'm sure we all would like a good job and good income. Mashallah, may Allah bless us all with sustenance. But sustenance with barakah and blessings. When you get money, it doesn't mean it's a sign of the happiness of Allah. Some of the greatest saints did not have so much in terms of material wealth. If material wealth depicted the love of Allah. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have owned entire creation. Trust me. All the materialistic wealth on earth, Allah would have given it to him. The people offered it to him. He told them, Wallahi, if you put the sun in my right hand, the moon in my left hand, and you ask me to stop calling towards the goodness, I wouldn't stop. What does that mean? It means keep your things. That's not what impresses me or attracts me. What's right is right. Here's the Pharaoh. What did he say? He became so arrogant. He wanted to control. So he was scared because a man was going to come to take him off his seat and remove his control. He was warned about it. He became frightened. So what happened? He says, Allah says, وَقَالَ فِرَعَوْنُ ذَعُونِي أَقْتُ الْمُوسَى وَلْيَدْعُ رَبَّهُ He says, oh my people, leave me. Let me kill Moses. Let him call his Lord. Who's his Lord? Who is his Lord? It's like a man with a gun in front of you and he says, I'm going to shoot you. Call your Lord. I mean, he's stupid because you might kill me today. Guess what? 
My Lord is coming for you after my death. How's that? How's that? My Lord will come for you. I might be gone, but you gained nothing. From this day onwards, your life is a misery and a mess. And you're going to be dealt with, if not by the law of the land, definitely by the justice of Allah. That's it. How can you say, where's your Lord? Call him. Let's see. When we get sick and ill, people say, where is Muhammad? Astaghfirullah. Number one is, Allah is a shafi Muhammad sallallahu is our Nabi. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you have people of other faiths coming to the weak ones from amongst us, telling them, come. I remember a youngster telling me clearly, this has happened more than once. He says, people from other faiths came to me and told me, Jesus will cure you. Muhammad won't. So I told him, when they come back to you, tell them there are 25 other people who are Christians who have bigger diseases than mine in the same ward. What about them? How's that? How's that for a response? It's got nothing to do with that. It's got, it is just cheap psycho where you're coming to someone and trying to con them that because you're worshipping Allah, you're not getting cured. But there are people worshipping a religion they are worshipping from long and they are even in a worse off position. It's got nothing to do with that. Don't come to our people and try to con them in that way. That's why I'm here to say, you know what? We worship Allah alone. That's what it is. Whether I'm sick or not, ultimately what's going to happen to me? I'm going to die. If not today, then tomorrow. Do you agree? Is death a loss in the sense that does it mean I've, I, I, I'm doomed? In fact, through death I will go to paradise. If I don't want to die, I'm not going to go. I have hope in the Lord who is merciful. What hope do you have? The Pharaoh, he says, let me kill Moses. Let him call his Lord. So the question obviously is why would you want to do that? You know what he says? I'm fearing that he's going to make you change your religion. Up to now, you're worshipping me and you are saying you are the God and the Lord. I'm fearing he's going to come and make you change that. So what was Musa alayhi salam bringing? He was liberating the mind from worshipping anything besides the maker alone. The prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, was liberating the mind by the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the mind realize that your Lord is the one who made you and nobody else. No one with money, no one with authority is your Lord. Not a Lord, no. Subhanallah. This was the Pharaoh. He says, I fear that he will change you, your faith. Or, and you the of al-ard al-fasad, he's going to create Chaos and corruption on earth. He's going to cause problems. Because up to now, we are moving all correctly. And you know what? There's no corruption and chaos. I'm the God. I'm the Lord, according to the Pharaoh was saying. And he was wrong in that. But he says, but everything is moving smooth. He's going to come here and make you believe I'm no longer the God. And then you guys are going to rebel against me. Allah says, that's the whole reason why we sent the prophet Moses. Because there was too much tyranny. This man was doing as he wishes. You don't do as you wish. You respect others. You honor them. You offer them goodness for the sake of Allah. You worship your maker alone. So a man comes up and says, why are you killing this person? If he is lying to you, then his lie is against him. And if he is telling you the truth, one day you will serve punishment. You will be sentenced. You will have severe punishment against you. But they said, no, it's okay. This was the Pharaoh. What did Musa alayhi salam say? Musa alayhi salam looked at him and told him, you know what? I call you to worshipping the maker alone. You know you are not a god. You know that this wealth you have can be taken and snatched. You know that you're just a human being. And you know the crimes you've committed. But no, two things got to his head. Over and above other items. His money, meaning his belongings, his ownership. And secondly, his authority. The fact that he was a leader. Or in a position of leadership. It got to his head. 
So Allah punished him and destroyed him and Allah Almighty made an example out of him as much as he used to call himself the Lord of the worlds. He used to call himself the Lord of the worlds. So much so that he became so helpless. I want to talk about two things before I close. Number one is, and the lesson is for all of us, when you become haughty, when you oppress people because you think you got money, and when you oppress people because you think you got wealth or authority, sorry. So wealth and authority. Allah is giving you a chance, then he's coming for you. And when Allah comes for someone, trust me, you have no chance. Not at all. What did happen to the Pharaoh? He had everything. He didn't have one or two men. He had thousands of men working for him. Go check the pyramids out. He had a lot, more than what you can imagine. For Allah to mention him, he had a lot indeed. But at the end, when he was following, and I'm cutting the long story short, he's following Musa, Moses, may peace be upon him, with all with the people, and he enters into the, the, the sea, and the sea opens, and he says, it's opening for me. Wow, yes, it was for you. It was. <laughs> you see, he hesitated a little bit. He looks at the sea. He checked this thing. is open wide. Wow, let's go. It's open for me. It did, but not for you to be saved, for you to be destroyed. That's what it was. Something, a man who called himself the Lord of the world, suddenly he thinks this is for him to be saved or to win or be victorious, yet it's the opposite. And the fool didn't even realize. Subhanallah. So as he's entering there and the water starts encroaching on him and his people and he realizes he is now drowning. He wanted to say, I believe in the Lord of the worlds. But he couldn't say that because he was the one who called himself the Lord of the worlds. So if he says, La ilaha illallah, he used to call himself Allah. What was the point? He had to say, La ilaha illalladhi amanat bihi banu Israel. Allahu Akbar. He had to say there is no God worthy of worship besides the one whom Banu Israel and Moses call out to. That's what he had to say. You see the example Allah gave in the Quran. He couldn't even say La ilaha illallah because he called himself Allah. He had to say La ilaha illa alladhi amanat bihi Banu Israel. Wa ana min al-Muslimin. I'm a surrenderer. I'm surrendering now. Allah says Allah says, now you want to repent, you want to turn, and all along when we sent you reminder upon reminder upon reminder, nothing happened, you were from among those who spread chaos and corruption, it's too late. That was example number one. You see how weak he became. He couldn't even say a statement. He had to clarify himself because he used to call himself the God. Second thing. When he was drowned completely, two things happened. The people may have doubted that this man is not dead because he used to call himself the Lord of the world. He's going to come back. Number one. Number two is the sea. Apparently, according to some narration, found him too dirty to be within that pure water. But the Pharaoh is in that water. Allah instructed the water to spit him out. فَالْيَوْمَ نُنَجِّيكَ بِبَدَنِكَ لِتَكُونَ لِمَنْ خَلْفَكَ آيَةً وَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِّنَ النَّاسِ عَنْ آيَاتِنَا لَغَافِلُونَ On this day, we have instructed that your body be preserved motionless so that you can be an example for those to follow because many people are definitely oblivious of our signs. That's what Allah says. So he was spat out of the sea. And his motionless body lay on the side. To this day, it is there. 
A man who called himself the Lord of the worlds. And you see the flaking of this brittle skin happening. Mummified. Ramses II or not is irrelevant. But Allah says he's preserved. Because Allah wants every tyrant to know your day is coming. You might cause chaos on earth. You might threaten people. You might execute your threat. But it's limited. You also have to die. People say, I'll kill this guy. Hang on. After that, then what? Don't you have to die? Say, no, but you know what? If you pull the trigger, I tell you, Allah's trigger is not even a trigger you can see. They say, the whip of a human can be heard. The whip of Allah doesn't even have a crack. It is silent, but it is absolutely violent. The rain you see out there comes down pitter patter. You look at it, you smile, you initially enjoy, you walk out. But if you are sitting there oblivious of Allah, oppressing, you ought be worried that this rain is not going to stop. And the same rain causes floods and a little while later, your wall comes crashing and sometime later, the wind begins to blow and your roof is off and a little while later, your entire house is uprooted and you are standing there being beaten from tree to tree as the trees are being uprooted as well and you are being pounded through the water and you are going straight into the oceans and you don't even know where and there's no sign of you because at the end of the day you're covered and you're actually gone invisible, totally lost in the mud and the slime and whatever else that followed after the disaster yet you were partying when initially the same rain that was going to destroy you started as a pitter patter. The punishment of Allah, when it comes, it comes. What's the message today? Please calm down. That's the message. Let's turn back to Allah. Don't let things get to your head. You are no bigger than anybody else. You are just one number. Respect people, honor them. Don't let your money and your power get to your head because that head is going to be the root of your destruction at some point. If you continue this way. May Allah protect all of us. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina.